Hello and welcome to today's Rising Match Day this Saturday the 19th of June. I'm Owen Evans here to take you through all the headlines ahead of this weekend's clash with San Diego Loyal. Coming up on the show. There could be a pretty dramatic change in midfield with both Aidan Quinn and Kev Lambert available for selection. But what difference could they make? He made Team of the Week against Tacoma and has kept three clean sheets in four games. But the starting spot isn't yet exclusively his. We catch up with Ben Lunt. And yet another meeting this week with San Diego Loyal, but a first trip out to the coast. What should we expect tonight? But first, let's take a look back to last week and Rising's home game against Tacoma Defiance. So Tacoma Defiance, Seattle Sounders reserve team, got off to a slightly strange start with a kickoff here, as you're about to see. Taken to the kickoff, taken a double touch on the kickoff. Really see that rising get the ball instead to start them off. But not really the best of starts from Rising. Tacoma getting a lot of chances. In fact, Ben Lunt playing a big role in keeping the scores level in the early exchanges. But when you need a difference maker to step up, up steps captain Solomon Asante. This strike from distance. Perhaps the keeper should have done a little bit better with it. It does look like he gets just about the fingertips to it, but you can't take anything away from the strike. Spectacular from Asante, rising 1-0 up going into the break. Shortly into the second half, and it's going to be Solomon Asante again. After it's passed around a little bit here, comes to him and he hits it. Deflection to take it in, but that doesn't matter. 2-0 to Rising, they're cruising in the early second half. And it doesn't stop there again, Asante involved in this. Perfect pinpoint pass to pick out Santi Moa on the far side. He plays it across for Tate Schmidt. Not greedy at all for a player on a very long goal scoring streak. And Schmidt, the hometown boy on his debut, finds the net. So 3-0 rising on the night, here's the post-game reaction. Uh, we were a little sloppy at times, but I think in the second half when you saw again, uh, we, were, we were more willing to take risks going forward with more numbers, but also when we were attacking, our fullbacks were a little more narrow, so we didn't let them out. And uh, I mean... Whenever this team is in trouble, when there's anything is wrong, you just call Solo Asante and say, hey, put the team on your back. And it's a, I, I'm at a loss for words for this kid. He's, uh, I hope he never, ever leaves Phoenix. You know, it was a dream come true to be able to come, you know, play in front of my hometown, in front of my fans and, fr and friends. And, you know, to get a f first goal for the Phoenix Rising is an incredible feeling. What we expect from our goalkeepers is we're going to attack a lot. We're going to put you in some difficult moments. And I thought that uh, the breakaway save at 1-0 was massive. Um, and when, they, when a keeper does that, I'm sure the center backs were, were thanking him. And it makes you all feel like we're not going to lose. So back to winning ways for Phoenix, Rising taking the victory with a clean sheet as well. That was enough to earn Ben Lunt in the Rising goal, both Man of the Match and Team of the Week plaudits. Interestingly enough, the stat's not really showing the dominance you'd expect out of a 3-0 win, further underlining both Lunt's impact and a lack of clinical finishing on the part of Tacoma. 
Well, after two weeks on the balance without them, Rising could be set to welcome back Aidan Quinn and Kev Lambert into the midfield lineup tonight. Quinn, out with a hamstring injury, might have been ready to go last week, but was left out as a precaution, according to Rising coach Rick Shantz. Kevin Lambert, away on international duty with Jamaica, he'd made a late substitute appearance in their one all draw with Serbia before starting in the team's 4-0 loss to Japan's under-23s. But what kind of an impact could their return have tonight? Well, let's put it this way. You're, you're going into them this time now with Aiden Quinn and Kevin Lambert on the field, and I think that's a massive difference. You know, Aiden's ability to pressure and win the ball from... Uh, from the from Colin and and their what's his name the other midfielder, um, it helps us because and then Kev's ability to cover lateral spaces and cut off passing lanes is a little bit more than Jeremy's. Uh, I thought we were a little bit better offensively with Joey and Jeremy, but the tenacity, the the athleticism was not the same. So uh, we we have to still make that decision. Do you go in there and play the first the way you did the first game in Phoenix? Oh, or do you make an adjustment tactically? So, again, really can't say too much about that, but um, the guys are they are prepared to, to change or do what we need in order to be successful, and I think they trust the coaching staff. So, uh, you know, we're implementing what we need to this week, and we'll probably let you guys know sometime around Saturday at kickoff. <laughs> yeah, Aiden, Aiden and Kev, I mean, they're, they're... – they're already, I would say, veterans in the game. They they are so calm and collective uh, on the ball in the game that you know their presence just already makes that can make a difference. But um, yeah, no, we're, we're all happy to have them back again. That just you know stirs up the competition again. You know, guys that have played don't want to give up their spot. They they are coming back. You know, they want to be back in the team. Other guys don't want to be out of the, out of the team. So. Um, yeah, that also stirs up competition, and competition is is good, is is very good. That makes us like get the quality of training high, and you know that prepares everyone better for the games. Well, Lund took the crown of USL goalkeeper of the year last season while at Louisville, but now fighting for a spot in a club of the same league. Earlier this week, I caught up with Ben to talk about his move to the US, his time here in Phoenix, and his ambition of playing in the top flight. I played in Germany in a yeah in a, on a high level um you know I was on the bench for Hertha's first team um but you know I didn't quite make the jump into the first team and I had a yeah a couple of opportunities you know to just keep going in like the second division third division a couple of really good second teams um I could have could have played for but nothing really that really excited me and then I had this idea of college soccer and my, my family was, you know, big in education and playing in Germany and education is tough to combine. So college soccer was the perfect solution kind of to like, you know, keep, keep the dream alive of playing professionally and also pursuing um, yeah, a degree. So that was like the, the perfect, um, yeah, the perfect deal, I would say. Culture, it was a it was a culture culture shock, I would say. Um, it's it's all similar to Europe here, but but somewhat different. So uh, it definitely took me a while. Also, my English wasn't really good when when I came here. So I I, I struggled a lot. I would say my my first year. But um, looking back at it, I think it's the best decision I could have made. Uh, met so many great people here and so many good memories. So, really good decision. Not easy moving um, once the season has already started. So, you know, ideally you like to come into a team when everyone is new, when everyone is trying to settle in, when everyone is trying to, like, talk and find, you know, new connections and, and all of that. So, yeah, I kind of miss that here in Phoenix. Uh, I've just done that in Cincinnati where I got used to my teammates. I just settled in my apartment, found a little friends group. Yeah, and then coming coming to Phoenix, it's just like yeah, you have to have to do all that again. But um, I would say the team really made it easy for me. Um, I played right away, which also makes it easy to get to get into a team, like also socially. So um, yeah, and I'm, I mean, it's it's been easier than what I expected to be honest. Um, just moving, also my dog, my wife here, 
uh, has, was, was a journey. So, uh, but everything worked out fine. I know, has it been a little bit easier maybe having another German speaker on the team in Rufat? Yes, Rufat and his wife, uh, Laura, uh, they, helped, they helped a lot. Uh, it's good to have like an instant connection, someone you can instantly talk to and have a, have a relationship already. Uh, so that definitely helped, yeah. So you played over in Louisville. What is the difference, or have you noticed any differences between the Eastern Conference and the Western Conference? Uh, I wouldn't say I'm, I, I've seen a big difference in the conferences, um, but from like playing in Louisville, um, we, we, we had to ball more. I was used to more back passes and it was more up to me to, you know, open up the game already. Um, and we would just like try to break down for 90 minutes, try to break down the team and maybe score one or two goals and, and that would be it. Uh, yeah, here in Phoenix, we, we score way more goals. Um, but also, since we have so much attacking power in the team, we go up, we, we try to go high up the field, get the ball to our attackers so fast that we also don't have as much possession as I was used to the last two years. But, you know, that's, that's also a good thing. We score, we score more goals. We are more dangerous. We, we're not really... It's difficult for, for our opponents to calculate us because we can just like go up the field so fast. So that's a big difference I, I noticed, but like in playing style from East to West is ah, difficult to say. Is there any part of you, you know, after winning the goalkeeper of the year award last season, that's frustrated that you didn't get the chance to prove yourself at the next level? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you, you, you know, the question definitely hits, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, that absolutely frustrating, of course. Uh, you know, the fo I played in Louisville for two years while being with Cincinnati. So the focus for the last two years was always Cincinnati. Um, I'm trying to, yeah, the focus was Cincinnati. And that's what I, you know, focused on for the last two years. And then things didn't work out in Cincinnati, just the situation wasn't right whatever yeah i mean of course i was gutted um i think that's definitely understandable um but also i think the frustration turned really quickly into into motivation definitely put a put a chip on my shoulder and then having the opportunity to playing playing for phoenix that's just really really yeah i would say put really put a chip on my shoulder and i really want to prove it to everyone now i want to prove it to cincinnati that they definitely made the wrong choice so, um, yeah, definitely turned into motivation. And I'm glad to be in Phoenix now. I mean, it's definitely a powerhouse. We're, we're, we're a fantastic team. Uh, I, I think I can contribute a lot to, to the team's success. And I'm just happy to be here now. And I'm looking forward for another good year. A little bit unusual that you go into the USL and compete with another goalkeeper who's on loan from an MLS club. So. We're basically two MLS goalkeepers competing with each other, but not an MLS team. We're competing in a USL team for, for a spot. So a little bit of an unusual situation, but um, I've, I, mean, I think we will both respect each other a lot. And, you know, the competition is, is making both of us better. Um, everyone is giving 100% in training. Um, yeah. And, yeah, with your last game... And I suppose the appearance before that, when you also kept the clean sheet, do you think you've made a statement to Rick that he should pick you? Yeah, personally, I think I made a statement um, for my first game on. Um, I have three clean sheets in four games. Um, yeah, but that's, you know, but I have to make a statement every game, every chance I get because the competition, competition is, strong, is strong. So I have to take my chances and I have to, you know, just... Yeah, perform well. It's it's not really much of a choice, but so far I think it has it has worked out. But uh, also overall, I think the competition in the team is huge. You know, like for example, this weekend you could see four or five players from MLS teams be on the bench. So that's in general like a huge competition in the team. So everyone in the team knows that you know we have to perform well, otherwise there might be other really strong players of you know on the bench that that can help the team. So I think it's a really healthy competition um, so far in the team. And 
yeah, it's so far it's making everyone stronger, and also it's a, it's a long season, so down the road we'll we'll need everyone. And do you think overall, if you have a successful loan spell here, do you think that'll be enough that you do get your shot at MLS? Yeah, I mean, you never know. Uh, I just, for me, stop thinking too much ahead. Uh, I think that's the best way for me to go personally, because if I start worrying about things in the future or, you know, things down the road, it's just going to make me crazy. And, you know, that's not what I need right now in the season. So right now the focus is on Phoenix. Um, and that's really all I can do. That's all I can influence. And that's what I'm going to uh, focus on. Well, let's take a look at what's been happening around the rest of the Pacific Division. So Rising going into today with a five-point lead atop the Pacific Division table. There's only one club across the whole league with more points. That's Tampa Bay with 18. Both RGV and Birmingham Legion on the same as Rising, but having played more games. A loss for Los Dos sees them fail to close the gap on Phoenix, while victories for Orange County and San Diego Loyal show them starting to perform closer to their pre-season expectations. No game for Sacramento Republic this past week, aside still struggling for form, their last win coming on the 12th of May, with only one point in the five games since. They do leapfrog Tacoma Defiance in the table though, with a pair of losses dealing a blow to the Sounders reserve team's goal difference. With seven points off the last three games, Vegas lifting themselves up off the bottom of the table for the first time. Oakland Roots take their spot there, although the California side has played substantially fewer games. So three Pacific Division games taking place today, Oakland Roots enjoying their home opener against Sacramento Republic after those sides drew just over two weeks ago. That one's at 5.30. Kicking off at the same time as rising tonight, Inform Las Vegas Lights host Orange County. The two sides not in action today, Tacoma Defiance and LA Galaxy 2 both have games scheduled in midweek. Well looking ahead to tonight, it's another clash against San Diego Loyal, but how does that familiarity factor in? Here's Rick Shantz. There's nothing they don't know about us, and there's nothing we know we don't know about them. So uh, you can get creative, and, and you can try and make changes, and outthink yourself a little bit. I, I think Pep Guardiola is is probably understands that a little bit more than I do. But for me, it's the subtle tweaks and changes. You know, I noticed that Landon had made a comment that they're the only team that knows how to beat us, and um, they haven't beaten us. But you know they've got a good game plan and they've got some good ideas, but I think it really comes down to the players. They've got good players. We knew that all along. Everybody knew that. Um, they've added Miguel Berry, which was huge for them. Now they have a true target nine, which now you can't, you can't press so high and you've got to be a little smarter about the spaces that you leave open. So we've been working a lot today on, on what it looks like in, in emergency moments and deep defending and midfield defending. So I think we'll be prepared um, the team is in a really, really good state of mind, knowing that we have, uh, I think, four of our next five on the road. And, and it's, uh, it's not about how pretty you play. It's about getting points. So, uh, you know, our goal, we've set our goal, what the next five games looks like and how many points we want to get. So we just got to get after it. So ultimately, what are the boys expecting? We'll, we'll expect another tough, tough game. Um, they're going to be at home this time. They're going to have a full crowd, um, full stadium, like full capacity. So we expect them to come at us with, with everything they have. They want to prove to their fans um, that they can beat us and no better place to do that than in San Diego. So we're ready for, for a fight, but we also focus on, on us a lot rather than worrying too much about San Diego. We know what they are trying to do, but uh, we know as you know, we, we're trying to focus on our game. So yeah, we're definitely ready for a fight, but um, yeah. Torero Stadium being opened up in full tonight. The first time that Loyal's ground has had no capacity restrictions since March, 2020. In fact, it's only the second time since the club was founded that they've been able to fill the stadium. But what kind of an impact could that have on tonight's game? Oh, it's massive. Uh, I think they have like eight to 10,000 people at those games. It's so cool. And as I said before, that when you go on the road and you play against a team and there's 500 people in the stands, it's not like it gives the visiting team an advantage. Uh, I, I, it's actually, it kind of 
kills the energy at times. I think when we go somewhere and there's a big group and there's a, they're chanting and they're, there are certain players that thrive with the negativity from the opposing fans. And for us, we constantly talk about uh, having a target on our back and everybody wants to beat Phoenix. So trust me, going to San Diego, we know it's a difficult environment. We know it's, uh, they don't want us to win there. Uh, they're super motivated. The last time we played there, they played out of their minds. So for us, it's going in, being humble, respecting that environment and actually being proud because it's good for USL. It's good for soccer in America that when we go into a stadium and there's 10,000 people, you know, cheering against us, um, I, that I think is a, is a great sign for Division II soccer in the U.S. and uh, we, we look forward to it. Personally, I love when, 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 when I'm playing the away game where the, you know, the, the, crowd, the crowd goes wild and has a lot of fans in the stands, so definitely is a lot of motivation. Um, so it's just like, in general, it's, it's great to see fans back in, in, in the stadiums. Um, so definitely excited. And of course, it won't be just home fans there tonight. Rising looking forward to its second closest trip of the year with potentially 100 Phoenix fans making the five to six hour drive across to the coast. But just how important is that traveling support? Well, I know there's going to be a lot of the Quinn family there. That's going to be exciting. I've heard they've asked for a lot of tickets. Uh, I've heard from quite a few fans that they're traveling over. So the more, the better. It's so awesome. I hope they have a wonderful time. It's not a bad time, I guess, to be in San Diego if you have to go over there. Um, but it's for us, it means so much to have traveling support. I think that's something we're very proud of. Um, you know, uh, other than New Mexico, I think San Diego had a few, but in general, uh, our fans travel really well uh, when, when, when available. And that means the world to our guys and they know. And I told them, make sure we find out where they're at. And, and when we score, we celebrate with our fans. Well, that's all we have time for on today's Rising Match Day. Tonight's game, a 7.30pm kickoff. Remember, you can watch it live on ESPN Plus and locally on The CW. And also remember to follow me on Twitter for the latest updates from here in California. Until then, enjoy the match. Goodbye.